USC is back here on 710 ESPN. The announcement this morning that uh, this fall, USC football, USC men's basketball, and USC women's basketball will all be heard here on 710 and the all-new ESPN LA app. And our special guest this afternoon is Lincoln Riley, the head coach of your USC Trojans. Coach, we're so happy to have you here on 710 ESPN and this partnership. We're so excited to have you guys back. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Great to be back with you guys. We've got a lot of a lot of changes going on right now. Uh, biggest of the bunch, obviously, uh, going into the Big Ten. So, so fitting that uh, we'd be back uh, joined with you guys in this partnership. Yeah, Coach, and I'm really excited, too, because I think after a touchdown is scored, when the lights go crazy at the Coliseum, like it would be super cool if like it flashed across the lights, like ESPN, 710, Sedano and Cap, like put our names up in lights. That, that sounds really cool to me. I don't know how you feel about that, George. Coach, you have a problem with that? Yeah, you guys go 060 pretty quick. I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, you, you know what, Coach? We, you know, we know you're a busy man, so we got to take advantage of your time. That's how we do things. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, Coach, l- let me ask you this. I mean, you already mentioned the, uh, the adjustment uh, that you guys are going to have to make heading into a new conference. Well, you know, what is the biggest adjustment or what are some of the adjustments that you'll have to make? Yeah, I think you know, I think the biggest is just you're getting ready to play, you know, obviously a lot of new opponents. Uh, you're getting ready to play in a lot of new venues, you know, going against coaches, uh, different skill sets, uh, different offensive and defensive and special teams, you know, systems and philosophies. So there's just a, there's a major shift there. Um, and, and, yeah, probably – doesn't feel too different to me. I think this will be the third conference I've coached in in the last four years. So it's, uh, you know, you, you get used a little bit to, to some of the changes, but it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, listen, the, the games that this is going to create, uh, the experiences for our players and our team, the experiences for our fan base, uh, getting to go to some of these different venues, getting to have some really new, exciting rivalries uh, that'll they'll get to see played in the Coliseum every other week in the in the fall is, is really really special. And so uh, you're going into you know what is undoubtedly you know one of the best leagues in the country. Um, you've got really two that have separated themselves, and we get a chance to to go be in this one. And it's it's new for a lot of people, uh, but they I think everybody would be would be, you know, it'd be well served to, to embrace all the really cool things and moments and matchups that this, this union's going to create. Coach, um, right now, being in mid-June, could you explain to everybody who's listening, including us, what you guys are doing? Because unlike every other year where the USC football team would be preparing for UCLA and Oregon and so on, I suspect you guys are probably scouting the entire league that you're moving into. Would you explain kind of like where you guys are in the process? Yeah, certainly. Now that that process starts, uh, you know, pretty quickly after the season ends, and you always get a chance to take a deep dive into to your season, but then a chance to look ahead. And obviously, this hasn't been a secret to kind of where we were headed and some of the opponents that were upcoming. So there's been. Certainly, a lot of familiarizing ourselves with with the future opponents here over the last several months, and then uh, and then particularly right now, uh, we're at a time where our players are, are back on campus, and so we've got an opportunity to, to get on the field with them. Uh, along with this being, you know, maybe the most busy recruiting time uh, of of the year, uh, really a critical time in recruiting. So yeah, June's uh, June has become a pretty busy month, and, and with the uh, added new opponents and conference move, that's uh, that's even made it a little bit more important for us. You mentioned the scheduling, right? And and obviously the the different portal schedules, the recruiting schedules. I mean, it is a three hundred sixty five day year job now. There there is very little downtime for you. That that's that's correct. Yeah, it's uh, it, it has changed a lot. You know, I mean, ten years ago, June used to be one of the you know, lightest months for, for coaches and their families and staff. And, and it's, uh, it, it has, it's really shifted. Um, you know, they've tried to, you know, look at the calendar to try to find some ways to combat this because you're, you're, you're putting, you know, a lot of people because these, these college football staffs have gotten to be where they're pretty big uh, across the country. And so there's a lot of people that are kind of working around the calendar, around the clock. And, um, you know, with the current calendar, that's just uh, there's only kind of one way to get it done. So, yeah, I think it's something that's being looked at and hopefully we can uh, 
find some ways to ease it at a few points. Uh, but, but yeah, right now it's, it is what it is, and, and uh, there's a job to be done. Coach, I am so glad you mentioned recruiting because it's got to be so different now. You just said 10 years ago things were different. When you think about recruiting now, and you think about recruiting a kid out of high school and how long he may or may not be in the program, Um, could you just explain like where your head is when it comes to how you recruit in 2024 versus, you know, just 10 years ago and how you thought about recruiting given NIL and transfer portal? Yeah, it's, it's wildly different. I mean, you got, you got NIL, um, you got the transfer portal. So you never know exactly how long somebody's going to be in your program. Um, which which makes it difficult, and then and then you know this is all getting ready to to rapidly change again. Uh, you know next July when when revenue share uh, is, is implemented and the schools can directly pay the players and and there can be contracts and and we we don't know all of the parameters around it yet, but we, we you know that that is coming and so. It has. It's changed a lot. Um, there, there's still a piece of it that feels like recruiting of old. It's still about your 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 program, uh, your academics, um, the history of your program, your staff. I mean, all of those things. And there's still a lot of people that that is very very important to. But you've added, you know, those components. You've added a, a financial component, which, as we all know, in the workforce, um, that's a factor for anybody who works. And then and then with the transfer portal, you've added. Uh, you've added kind of the, the the component of not knowing necessarily who's going to be on your roster year to year, and so um, yeah, I think we all recognize there's some flaws in our system, and hopefully the the revenue share and some of the things upcoming will will, will help that. Uh, but right now, we've tried to put our personal feelings aside from it, and and basically, like our job is to make USC the best we can, and to get USC back to competing for national championships on a yearly basis. Like that's. That's our job. Whatever the parameters are that they give us to do it, that's what we're going to do. And, and we've tried to take that attitude uh, as a staff here at USC, you know, regardless of what changes have happened or upcoming. And we've tried to be innovative and figure out how we can make, make it best work for this program. USC head coach Lincoln Riley joining us here on Sedano and Cap here on 710 ESPN. I'm currently coach in Boston because I cover the NBA as well. So no Father's Day for me, unfortunately, on FaceTime. But with you in recruiting, were you able to balance some Father's Day duties with uh, or celebration with recruiting yesterday? It was about fifty-fifty. Uh, we had a uh, yeah, we had an opportunity to to get a little bit of the morning with our families, which was which was cool, and then uh, had some recruiting camps and visits yesterday afternoon. So which. Uh, in June, uh, getting at least a half day at home with the kids was, was awesome. And, uh, and and so, yeah, anything that we can get, we'll, we'll take it. Coach, uh, two daughters, Sloan and Stella. How old are the girls? Uh, girl dad. I got three of them myself. So uh, tell us a little bit about the fam. Yeah, they're, they're 11 and 7. Um, they're, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're awesome, um, super supportive of what I do and then awesome just be able to kind of watch them grow up and, and it's really been really fun seeing them get a chance to grow up here in Southern California. Um, they've got some great friends. They've got a lot of extracurricular activities that they're involved in. They keep um, both myself and especially my wife really, really busy. But um, awesome, awesome kids that I'm uh, very blessed for and, you know, makes it exciting every night when I get a chance to go home. Yeah, no, no holidays. And it's just, you know, it's working in sports. It's a very, uh, you know, it's a very unique deal for sure. And the family certainly have to understand. But speaking of unique deals, you kind of alluded to earlier, Coach, about, you know, getting ready for the schedule and scouting new teams. I mean, the schedule you guys have is, is, is wild already. You begin with LSU, you got Utah State at home in your opener, and then you're at the big house in Michigan. I mean, there, there's not a lot of, not a lot of holes in this schedule for you guys. Uh, how do you feel about the schedule in general, and you know how excited are you with some of the new additions uh, to this schedule, with some of the additions you made to this roster to help you face that particular schedule? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's a really strong schedule. Um, we're going to play some great opponents, and and uh, we feel like our opponents are going to get to play a pretty darn good opponent too. Uh, so we're we're excited about those matchups. Um, and listen, I mean, it's a it's a hybrid schedule. I mean, there's parts of the schedule that we're that were uh, built, uh, you know, for the Pac-12 and kind of what what we felt was necessary at that point. And obviously, there's a massive change. And it's, uh, you know, what a lot of people, you know, may not understand is that 
the schedules are done years and years in advance. Um, and so tough to predict all that's going to happen or all that's going to change. But we, uh, no, we're excited about it. I mean, it's awesome to have a great opener. Um, I think, uh, you know, I've been a part of a couple of those throughout my career, and I think the, the momentum in the offseason and the excitement towards, you know, a marquee game, uh, there's your opener, is, is really a good thing. And so really looking forward to that. And then, hey, you still have our, our rivals um, uh, within within this. You still have an, an, an opposite opportunity to play. Uh, so a very quality Big Ten opponent. So, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great schedule. Our, our team, our players are really, really looking forward to it. Yeah, Coach, part of uh, improving is not just with the players but with the coaching staff as well. Would you talk to us about your new defensive coordinator and some of the additions that you've made to your defensive staff? Yeah, it's a tremendous staff. It really is. It was, uh, you know, it was, it was a lot of work to get these guys together, but I really think we, you know, really – I don't know that it could have turned out better, uh, you know, to be able to bring Dan and Lynn – uh, over as our defensive coordinator was certainly the the first and the and the key piece. Uh, just a tremendous coach has an NFL background. Uh, he did a fantastic job uh, at UCLA last year. I mean, they obviously made a massive jump defensively. You know, most improved defense in the country by by a mile. And uh, you know, just feel like he's an excellent teacher and fits everything that that we want to be here. Um, yeah, and then added some quality assistance. You know, brought brought Eric Henderson over from the LA Rams, uh, where you know all he had done is you know develop the best defensive line in football the last several years. It's phenomenal. Uh, brought Matt Epps, who was the head coach at North Dakota State, and won multiple national championship championships there, both as a head coach and as a defensive coordinator. Uh, brought him over to a linebackers coach, and his experience has been invaluable already. Uh, and then brought Doug Belk, who is the defensive coordinator at Houston. Uh, over to uh, coach our secondary, and he turned down multiple Power Five and and, and uh, NFL uh, jobs to come coach our secondary. And so it's a great group, a great group of guys, a lot of just really uh, impressive experience. Guys that have been at the front of the room, um, and guys that are you know, fixated on getting our defense to where I know it sh- what should be. Oh man. Keep going, Coach. Keep going. You were rolling. Oh, man, was, yeah, no, just just excited about yeah, the, just their impact on it. You could tell, a, you know, I, th- I thought spring ball. You could really tell, um, you know, that, that our players are really grasping it. That the, the the confidence is certainly rising. I think you can see it with our recruiting, especially on the defensive side. So, yeah, don't don't know the don't know it could have turned out any better. And now it's just a process to build it into what we want it to ultimately become. Lincoln Riley with us here on 710 ESPN. So I, I want to ask you about your current quarterback room, but I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about Caleb Williams and, and just his career in general. And, and, you know, you, you've had him, you know, from the beginning and h- how proud of you, uh, how proud are you rather of what he's been able to accomplish and what he can still accomplish at the next level? Yeah, super proud of him. You know, it was a, he had a he had a great journey uh, in college, a unique journey. Uh, obviously, came here to, to SC after his freshman year, and you know he he did a he did a great job here. You know, he was uh, um, you know one of one of many guys that have, had a great impact and really helped us. I think in a sense get this thing off the ground uh, to 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 really gain the momentum needed in the beginning, which certainly has happened, and and so. You know, appreciative for him and all of those guys here in the beginning. Those those won't be the those won't be the best teams that that we have. Probably not even close. Um, but but somebody's got to start it if you're going to turn something around. And he and a lot of those guys here in these first two years deserve a lot of credit for that. And then yeah, I'm determined to see him, you know, become the first pick and, and get a chance to go to Chicago and 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 in some ways, you know, kind of kind of do the same thing that that we started here at SC and uh, you know take an iconic brand that, that uh, maybe has been down for a little bit and go lift them up. And I know he's excited about it, the opportunity there, um, you know, and that's, uh, you don't get opportunities like that very often. So for him, you know, to go from being the high school kid uh, that we were recruiting several years ago to now in this position is really, really cool. And I'm certainly extremely proud of him. Yeah. And George, you mentioned the quarterback room that Caleb will not be a part of going forward coach. Um, a kid like Miller Moss, right? 
this is a unique guy in today's day and age of college football because most guys get to a place, if they're not playing right away or if they look into the future and they don't see themselves playing, they're gone, like right away. Um, This is a young man, though, that was all about USC, at least the way I see it. He was all about the school, all about the program, and he was happy to wait his turn. Has his turn finally come based on what he did last year in the bowl game? We certainly can have a great chance at it. There's no no doubt about that. He did a great job over the last two years. Obviously, was was great in the bowl game, and really the, the six weeks leading up to the bowl game, where he really took over as, as certainly one of, if not you know the um, you know kind of most prominent team leader uh, throughout that time. Um, and so yeah, he, he, he's got some good competition in the room with with Jade Maeda uh, and Jake Jensen. So he's going to have to go win the job. Uh, I feel like the quarterback job at USC is something that should never be handed to anybody. Uh, but he's a tough job, and and if and if he does in fact uh, win it, that will be a, a great story, not just for USC but really for college football. Because yeah, I mean there is there's so many guys that just the first hand of adversity they bail out and. I understand if you you know need need a fresh start in the place you're at, it's just simply not working. But you know, I think a guy like Miller, he, he loves he loves the school, um, he loves where he's at, he loves his teammates, and I think even the years that he wasn't the starter, um, he was developing. Uh, you know, he was getting coached. He knew he was getting better. And at some point, if you're in a good situation, you've got to have enough faith in yourself and, and self belief to say, I'm just going to keep getting better, and if I do that this thing's going to take care of itself. And so, you know, that's, that's the bet that he's made on himself. And I think it's, it's admirable. I think it shows his belief. And, uh, and again, his love for the school. And Coach uh, May, uh, Maeva, he transferred from UNLV. I actually call college football for ESPN as well. I did his bowl game uh, against Kansas this past season. For those that didn't get a chance to see him, you know, obviously some experience, good player. What can you say about his skill set for those that are not as familiar? Yeah, he's a, he is. He you know, threw over 3,000 yards at GLB last year as a redshirt freshman. Uh, you know, he's a big kid, you know, 6'4 kid that can uh, really see the field. He's got an extremely talented arm. Um, you know, great kid, really hard worker. He's been a really good addition to the room. And I thought he did some really nice things in the spring, uh, considering you know, he's coming in learning a new offense. So I think he'll, uh, I think he'll improve a lot. Uh, throughout this summer and looking forward to, to seeing kind of where he's at in fall camp. But uh, you know, it's certainly great to bring in somebody of his caliber into our room. Hey, Coach, I know we've taken up a lot of your time here this afternoon, but I want to just ask you this. Uh, so when George and I went to the Caleb workout on campus, you know, when you get there, you can see there's a lot of construction going on on campus. But the football facility and the athletic facilities, I mean, to me, I've been going there for 20 years, and it's it's just legendary. And I think about the players and the coaches that have been there. But new facilities on the way, which is another important part of recruiting and keeping guys on campus. Can you tell us about what is coming for the USC football program in terms of facilities? Yeah, massive changes. Uh, you know, completely uh, standalone new football operations facility that will house essentially everything that we do in football along with adding a new practice field, which has been sorely needed here for a, a long, long time. And um, this, uh, this facility is going to be fabulous, both in its just functionality day to day. And then, and then I think it's important when you, have a, when you have a football program that has a history that we have here, which is unparalleled, like your facility needs to represent that. It needs to be a reflection of that. So not just the players that come in, uh, you know, day to day to to work out or to get treatment or to get prepared for a big game, uh, but also, you know, when our former players come in, you know, when our former coaches come in, the people that built this program, you know, when our alumni are able to, to step in there, I, it, it needs to be special because this football program is special, and so it's been uh, you know fo- a focus point for us since the day that I got here. Um, you know, I can't wait for everybody to see. You know, some of the final plans and what this is going to, is going to look like. I think it's going to blow people's minds, and, and it's going to be exactly what it should be at USC football, and that's the best. Well, USC is back here on 710 ESPN. Again, USC football, USC men's basketball, and USC women's basketball will all be heard from now on on 710 ESPN. They return back after a number of years not being on the station, but we're so glad to have them back at their rightful home. And we're so happy to have you, Coach Riley, join us today. Thank you so much for the time. 
Best of luck this season. I know we'll catch up soon, but thanks again for joining us. Enjoy the rest of the offseason. Yeah, appreciate you, Coach. Absolutely, fellas. Spot on.